Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Being Real. I'm Joe. Get used to the face. Get used to the pace because we move quickly to get you quickly down the path to your own financial independence. And today we are talking about the number one thing that separates the rich from the poor. Bet this is going to be a little bit controversial. Uh, bet a lot of people tuning in saying, yeah, what does this guy think he knows? And it's not what I know, but I'll base my opinions and you can you can come to your own conclusions i'll give you the, the information it's what we do here give you information you do with it what you want it's some fascinating stuff uh fascinating stuff what is the number one thing and you, how can you say is there really one thing that separates the rich from the poor no i don't think so i don't think there's only one thing but there is one common denominator yeah there is we look at it and you look at the tests that were done and the scientific results and it's pretty amazing. And it tells us a lot about ourselves and a lot about our culture. So let's take a quick look and find out what is that one thing that separates the rich from the poor. And it is mindset. It is absolutely the mindset and how people perceive things and then their actions based off of those perceptions. Now, without going deep into some Freudian theories, let me just give you an overview of what we're talking about here. Okay. There is something called delaying gratification. Did I say just delaying gratification? Delaying gratification or delayed gratification. Dr. Walter Mitchell, back in the 1960s, conducted a test at Stanford University. And he put all these kids, four-year-old kids, four years old, into a room and told them there's nothing in the room except for chairs, a table, and uh, on the table there was a bell and big thing of marshmallows, big bowl of marshmallows. And he told all the children, he said, well, I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to come back in about 15 minutes. And here's your choices. You can go over and ring the bell and have a marshmallow. Or if you want to wait for me to get back, you can have two marshmallows. And he left the room. He comes back 15 minutes later. What's he find out? Well, ultimately he figures out, finds out it's about 50-50. It's about half and half. Uh, the kids took one, half the kids took one marshmallow, rang the bell, took the marshmallow. Half of them didn't. And when he got back, they all got two marshmallows. So the follow-up is the fascinating part. I'm talking about delaying gratification or delayed gratification. Those that took the marshmallow, the foot single marshmallow, they went and followed up with this 1981. They did a follow-up on this and... and what they found out was staggering. Of all the children that took the one marshmallow that wanted their marshmallow right now, almost to the child, almost to the exact child, were much more likely to have be have be prone to trouble and or violence and problems in their lives. And you got to remember, these kids are you know young adults. Problems getting into school, most have not gone to college, uh, running problems with alcohol, so forth and so on. Um, nowhere, none of them were. Not even one of them was considered to be. Uh, you know, quote unquote, successful. Whereas the children who had waited and for the second marshmallow, it was absolutely reversed. And all of them, almost to the child, had much better academic records, had adjusted better physically. That's, I forgot to mention that too. This actually has a physical component to it. They, they were physically more fit. They were physically in better shape. They weren't sick. They didn't have the addictions. They didn't have the problems that come along with, with all of those things. They were much more likely to be in stable jobs with a college career and so forth and so on. So what does that tell us? Well, according to Mitchell, it tells us that this delaying gratification, the ability to delay gratification, makes a huge difference in the development of these children. Now, how does that specifically work? Well, I'll tell you, they did it as a follow-up study in 2018, which isn't that long ago. Now, this is a different group. They did a huge group this time. Big, big, big group. 900 Instead of 90, they went to 900. And they basically found out the same exact things that it was about, you know, 50-50 split, except for they were able to dive into a little bit deeper. And what they found out was of the kids that took the one marshmallow versus the kids that waited for the second marshmallow, the kids that were able to delay the gratification, the split was socioeconomic, right down the middle. Those that came from the better, better, wealthier households, those with higher income households, the higher the income, the more likely the individual was to be in the second group of waiting of delaying gratification. Why? Interesting. That is the question. Now they have a lot of theories about it, but basically um, it, you're running from everything from the ability. Children that come from the poor households are, you know, there's no guarantee that tomorrow is going to be any better and take what you can get today. And this is something they're not told, but they learn 
they learn through exposure. And even if someone says they're going to give you something and they're going to give you something nicer, there's a pretty good chance that that won't happen. And whereas the kids that came from the higher income households, it was just ingrained in them that, yeah, if so, you know, if they were told by an authority figure that they could wait and have more, then they would just wait and have more. It's, you know, kind of common sense. Yeah, sure. I'd wait a day to get twice as much. 15 minutes to get twice as much. But the trust factor wasn't there because of the myriad of, you know, social issues that go on in lower income households. So yes, by age four, it is, they're able to determine if they have this delayed gratification, where they are with the delayed gratification muscle. Now, are you screwed if you don't have it? No, you're not. Cause it's just like any other muscle. Uh, it can be, you can practice and you can work it out and you can make it stronger. If you get it inherently is what the real, advantages. And that's why we see so, so, so many not succeed as we do that those who do succeed. Much fewer, that 1% group, the higher they are, it's just socially ingrained into their culture that you can wait. There's no sense of urgency. There's no sense of, I need immediate relief or help. I can sit and calmly plan and rationally come up with the best solution to any situation. Whereas the further you go down that same socioeconomic ladder, that becomes less and less and less and less until it gets all the way to the bottom where it's just not true at all. It's you better do something today because you have nowhere to sleep tonight. That is a really tough pattern to break, folks. And getting them to point from point A to point B is going to be really difficult for those people to ever come out into a situation where they're going to be successful, quote unquote, successful, because that ability to delay that gratification, to be able to wait for the paycheck, to be able to wait for an investment, to be able to wait and be patient for something to be better a little bit later on just isn't there. And it doesn't matter. Race has, makes no difference. Socioeconomics make all the difference. So yeah, fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. So what can we do? Well, we can just continue to make the world a better place. And if you don't have the strongest background, you have the choice. You do have the choice as an adult to make it better. You're never going to make anything perfect, but you can make it better. You can always make your situation better because you now know maybe what the reasons are and you can work on those things. You can work on working on yourself to be able to delay that gratification for a little while to have a whole bunch of success later. And that's the way it works in investing. That's the way it works in real estate. That's the way it works in anything, really. Delayed gratification. It doesn't come right now. You have to be patient, but it comes pretty quickly if you want to. But the longer you can wait, the bigger the reward. And when you're working on this yourself, remember, whatever you're doing to try to make it better, that reward's got to be a lot bigger than what the instant gratification is. You can't say, oh, okay, I want two marshmallows tomorrow. No, it better be five or something like that because you've gone a lot of bad habits in your life <laughs> to overcome. So you need to break that rule. And so whatever we are waiting for, that gratification better be a lot bigger than what the immediate reward is. And this is how we break the cycle. This is how we start breaking the cycle. There's only so much we can do for those that are in the cycles, but it gives us a better understanding of what's going on in these neighborhoods and what's going on with these kids and what they really need for as an entire community, as an entire nation, as an entire world for us to step up and be able to break the cycle of poverty so that everybody can succeed. That's it, folks. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you enjoyed the information, maybe not enjoyed it, but appreciated the information, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell notification if you would, and help us get this out into the algorithm. All right. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.